Hi, my name is Megan. Welcome back to Round the Cauldron. You might notice that I am in a different recording spot. Um, I might talk about that in the bonus section. I might not, I don't know. I'm in the park, my daughter is playing way over there. There are other people here way over there behind me or in front of me, I guess, behind you. Um, so yeah, hopefully this isn't super awkward. Since I'm recording in the park in public, I do need to apologize if there's any background noise. I promise you the background noise from being here in the park is better than what it would have been recording in my apartment, which maybe I'll talk about that. Maybe I won't, who knows? Um, so yeah, today's topic was inspired by a video that I watched that popped up in my recommended. I'll put it in the description and in the show notes, but basically it was a conversation that someone had with their following about um, deities being dangerous, deity work being dangerous. And so I wanted to expand on that topic because my thoughts, I guess, on that subject are different or slightly different than what they described. First, some announcements. Don't forget to enter my giveaway. Again, the link for that is in the description and in the show notes. It is going through the entire month of December. You have several chances to win several different prizes. So again, link in the description and in the show notes for that. The second announcement is that I was just recently on another podcast. I was on Rosemary by the Bucket Full, which is a podcast hosted by two other witches. And I will leave the link for that in the description and in the show notes. I definitely recommend giving that a listen. We talked about spirituality, witchcraft, and mental health, which is something that I am very passionate about myself. So I definitely recommend listening to their podcast, their brand new podcast. I think the episode I'm in is episode four or five. I don't remember which, but definitely give them a listen, especially if you're looking for other content to consume. So in this video, she claims that the, the concept of deities being quote unquote evil or dangerous actually comes from a, having a colonization mindset, a colonizer mindset, which I don't entirely agree with um, because if you look at the mythology, if you look at the stories, even the ones that weren't written after the fact, like um, with Irish mythology and the stories out of Ireland, a lot of those are written through a Christian lens. Even if we looked at the stories from Greek mythology, um, there are instances there where you don't want to mess with the gods. They can be dangerous, especially if they're crossed. So I, I disagree with the idea that deities being dangerous or evil comes from a colonizer mindset. I also want to say too that we can't fully understand the gods. We are simply feeble humans, basically. We, we can't understand them, the way they think, what they want, how they behave. It's, it's beyond us. So I don't necessarily like the attribution of evil or dangerous when it comes to deities because it's so much more complex. In their video, they also talk about people using deities as a tether. Um, so like uh, getting your power from a deity, which I actually just watched another video by another person here on YouTube that I'm not even gonna bother linking in the description because, well, maybe I will if you really wanna watch it, but literally in the first few minutes of the video, she says, I'm gonna talk about this, but I have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't believe that you can use deities as a tether. You can't draw power from a deity. That doesn't work that way. If they wanna help you, yeah, they can help you, but you can't like tap into them. It's not like a, a plug where you plug in and oh my gosh, now you have all this divine power and energy. It doesn't work that way. So that's something that I just didn't agree with her on in that video. I hope you can't hear the wind in my microphone too bad. Um, but there were a few things that they said in their video that really got under my skin because it makes it seem like working with deities is just this, this trivial thing and you can just approach it nonchalantly and casually and that it's all fun and games. Um, they mention that 
someone warning someone else about working with the deity has a very shallow understanding of deity work, and I 100% disagree with that. They also say that people who caution other people about working with deities or approaching deities are elitist and are gatekeeping deity work, which I know, just know. Okay, we'll talk about that, but that is very dangerous, I guess. I mean, I can't really think of a better word. It is awful to say that someone like me who is telling someone else, you know, hey, you might want to be careful, do your research, approach this deity with reverence, with respect, and don't just come at it very casually. That's, it's not me being elitist or gatekeeping. It's me being a polytheist who has done their research, who has worked with a couple of different deities and who has some deities that just, I refuse to approach. And, and they don't call to me and I am not going to approach them because of how they can be based on their stories. The first thing that I wanna say when it comes to my thoughts and my opinions on deity work and uh, teaching someone about deity work or giving advice on approaching a deity for someone is one, you don't have to work with, worship, honor, revere, whatever, any sort of deity to be a witch or practice witchcraft. Deity work is not a requirement. The only requirement of being a witch is practicing witchcraft. That's it. So for anyone out there who is looking for a deity or who wants to approach a deity because they feel like they have to, here's your permission slip. You don't have to if you don't want to, if that's not something you feel comfortable with. It's as simple as that. Now, as far as deities being dangerous, I don't think they're inherently dangerous. I think if you want to work with or approach a deity, you have every right to do so. But I think that there are some ground rules that you should follow when approaching a deity, approaching a divine figure. I don't think you should just go and say, hey, what's up? My name is Megan, let's work together. <laughs> That's kind of disrespectful in my opinion. Like I wouldn't, if I were someone's boss, um, I, or uh, how should I say that? I would not speak to my friend in the same way that I would speak to my boss, right? The, the way you, you speak to different people in your life is going to depend on the position that they hold in your life. You might be more casual with your friend than you would your boss, unless your boss is your friend too, but then, you know, are you like outside of the workplace or what? That's different. Um, so deities aren't inherently dangerous. I, I think it would be um, inaccurate to say deities are dangerous. They can be. And that's where I think the distinguishment, distinguishment, that's where I think um, that line needs to be drawn is they can be, but they aren't dangerous or quote unquote evil by nature of just being a deity. I think it's very difficult for us as humans to understand the way the gods work. And we can't identify their rules, their behaviors, their mannerisms, their, um, their ethics and their morals, because we are human. Those are human concepts. And they may not apply to the divine in any way, shape, or form, unless they tell you that they do. So for us to put the gods in a box and say, these gods are dangerous, and these gods are not, and these gods should be approached with caution, and these gods are more casual, I think that is inaccurate. It's an inaccurate depiction of the complexities of working with deities. But do I think that sitting here and telling you that you need to approach deity work with reverence and respect is elitist or gatekeeping? Absolutely not. Because if you are a polytheist and you believe that each deity is a being in their own right, then you will know that each one of them has their own personality. Each one of them has what they like and what they don't like. And you never want to approach a deity casually 
at first. You know, you want to be respectful. I think telling people who want to work with deities or honor deities to be cautious when approaching a deity is helpful. I don't think it's harmful in any way. And it's definitely not elitist or gatekeeping. I mean, if I'm sitting here trying to protect you from being taken advantage of, would you say that I'm gatekeeping? Because it's basically what I'm doing. You know, it's not, it's unfair to those of us who are polytheists, who are doing this work to be, I don't know, if you want to label me a gatekeeper, fine, but I am going to fully disagree with you. If you want to say that I'm elitist, fine, but I'm going to disagree with you. And I think many other people are going to disagree with you too. It's, I will never tell someone that they can't approach a deity or that they can't work with the gods or they can't pray to them or they can't ask for their help. You will never hear those words come out of my mouth, except for when I'm telling people that I won't say them. Um, but I will always tell people to be cautious because they are divine beings. They have their own rules and agendas. And just because they are divine doesn't mean they are going to be nice and fluffy and loving all the time. And I actually have a personal story that I want to share that I'll share in a little bit um, about working with Bridget because damn, she has kicked my ass. Um, <laughs> that's besides the point. So I actually wanted to talk about a couple of the myths and the stories where we can see that deities can be dangerous if they are disrespected or approached in a way that is not reverent and doesn't honor their position as divine beings. And the first one is actually where the, the gods know that the other gods are powerful and can cause harm or uh, inconvenience us mere mortals here on earth. And that is the story of Zeus and Io. And I think that I'm saying the name of the woman properly. I, I'm not entirely sure, but all of the links for these stories will be in the description and in the show notes because they serve as an example. So without reading the full myth to you, the story of Zeus and Io basically says that Zeus fell in love with Io, who was the daughter of a river god. And to keep Io from the wrath of Hera, Zeus turns her into a cow, basically, and he hides her from Hera. But Hera is still able to find her, and she sends a gadfly, which is like a horse fly that bites livestock, to follow Io basically wherever she went. And eventually she turns back into her human form, but this is just an example of how even the gods know that the other gods are dangerous. Oh my god, it's raining now? <laughs> I'm going to have to move. Okay. So hopefully this is still okay. I had to move because it started raining. Um, and now I'm under the cover of a thing at the park. With the story of Demeter and Persephone, if you don't know, when Persephone was kidnapped or taken by Hades, Demeter is just racked with with grief. And Demeter is a Greek goddess of the harvest and many other things. But in this instance, we are focusing on the harvest specifically. We can see in this story that the gods aren't to be taken lightly because when Demeter is overcome with grief, she basically sends the entire land into a drought. Everything dies. There is no food, no harvest, nothing until everything is resolved. And it's not necessarily something that she was doing to be, um, you know, mean or spiteful to the mortals. It's just, this is what she did. And when she was disrespected and angry, that's what happened. And for anyone curious, yes, it's raining. And um, my daughter is playing in the rain. It's fine. It's cool. It's totally okay. Um, anyway, the next story that I want to mention is the story of Athena and Arachne. Arachne? Arachne. We'll go with Arachne. Um, I'm, it, again, I'm probably saying it wrong. 
but this is a classic story of someone disrespecting the gods and paying the price. So the story goes that Arachne was a prideful girl who dared to challenge Athena to a weaving contest. Athena wove a depiction of the gods seated on their thrones, while Arachne mocked them with a scene of animal-shaped deities, like prancing around with mortals. Athena was upset and angry and basically beat Arachne with a shuttle, which the shuttle is what they use when um, weaving with a loom. For those watching on YouTube, I'll put a picture up here somewhere. Um, but she basically beat Arachne with a shuttle until Arachne was just so tired of it that she hung herself and was then turned into a spider. So this goes to show that you always want to approach the gods with respect. You never want to be like Arachne and approach them with pride and basically with an I'm better than you attitude because it's just gonna get you beaten over the head with a shuttle and turned into a spider. There's also a story that comes out of Irish mythology and it's the story of the Morrigan and Cúchulainn. Now, Cúchulainn was a warrior. He's got a lot of different stories written about him in the Libor Gabala Aran and um, oh, I think it's mostly in the Ulster cycle. Um, again, that link will be in the description and in the show notes. But in this instance, Cúchulainn pissed off the Morrigan and the Morrigan turned into an eel, turned into a wolf, uh, turned into, what else does she turn herself into? Um, and a cow, each time she was attacking him and wounding him. She eventually was defeated in that respect, and um, but she got the last laugh in the end because she tricked Cahullin into healing her and essentially winning because eventually Cahullin dies, he um, ties himself to a rock, I think, to try to keep the army at bay, but the Morrigan has the last laugh because she becomes the crow that sits upon his shoulder as he dies. Now I have a personal experience that I want to share in working with Bridget. If you don't know, I have done a whole podcast episode and video, I think, on my experiences in working with her, but I haven't been honoring her yet, even for a full year. If you want to watch that video, I'll link it up top here for podcast listeners. I'll leave that in the description and in the show notes. Um, and I plan on doing another video or podcast closer to Imolk where it's been a year or a little more than a year that I've been working with her. But in approaching Bridget, I was confronted with a lot of my own shadows. And this really makes sense when you think about it because Bridget is a goddess of many things. She is a goddess of the forge and of transformation. And, <laughs> and in being confronted with my shadows and working with her, it was a hard pill to swallow because, you know, when you first start working with Bridget, in my experience, she's very motherly, very, you know, come here, I'm going to help you, and we can work through these things together. But it's not necessarily that soft, coddle, coddly type of love. It's more of a tough love where she's going to kick you in the ass and you're going to do the work because she said you're going to do the work. Otherwise, there's no point, you know? And part of this was being confronted with my own expectations of what this was going to be like. I had this idea in my head that I needed to approach her and learn her the language, learn all of the stories and learn all of that stuff in order to fully understand what it's like to work with her and really get a good perspective, I suppose. And in my own experience, when I approached her, and when I felt like that's what she wanted from me. Looking back on it now, I got that feeling, but it was a learning experience. Hindsight is 2020, because what I'm confronted with now is seeing that those were my expectations and my, uh, not necessarily pride. There's a, there's a word I'm looking for. Uh, that's, that's how I thought it should go. 
I was sort of trying to lead when I should have let go and followed. And the looking back now, it's sort of like I approached her and got these feelings that I should learn the language and um, learn all of the stories. And she's like, okay, good luck with that. Like, we're okay, we can do that. And really making me confront my own shadow about expectations that I should or shouldn't have of myself and of others. Okay, so since the gardeners have shown up, I'm gonna try to wrap this up. I hope it's not too loud. I might have to redo this whole part. Um, but anyways, I wanted to give some final tips on working with gods, how you should approach them, in my opinion, and in, in my personal experience, and things that you should keep in mind. So the first one is that you should always approach deities with respect and reverence. You never want to approach them casually, uh, especially if you are a hard polytheist and you believe that each deity is a being in their own right. Um, I also want to make mention because the original video says that some people give offerings to ensure protection. Just because you give an offering to a deity doesn't mean you're protected or blessed by them. So you always want to keep that in mind too you need to cultivate that relationship. The gods can also say no to you. They don't have to work with you. They don't have to bless you. They don't have to protect you. They don't have to help you. They can say no. And then lastly, I wanna say, don't make promises that you can't keep or that you're not willing to do everything in your power to keep because the gods can and will turn your life upside down. It's part of what they do, especially if they're helping to um, mold you and shape you and forge you for whatever their purpose is. Um, I know Althea has talked briefly about the ways that her life has changed since working with some deities. I'll leave a link to her website in the description below. I just gave a brief example of some things that have happened to me since working with Bridget. Um, and I'm sure there are many other people who have these same sorts of experiences because the deities have their own agendas and working with them especially if you dedicate yourself to them or you give them offerings and you make them promises, they will make sure that you keep them. So thank you so much for putting up with this very strange video, very strange podcast episode. Um, I hope that this all made sense. I am feeling very overwhelmed right now with everything that's going on in the background. <sighs> Maybe I'll have a bonus section. Maybe I'll just record some audio. Maybe this won't even get posted. Who knows? Um, yeah, it's just been one of those days. It's been one of those weeks. Things are going kind of haywire. And, um, the whole reason that I didn't record in my own apartment is because my neighbors upstairs are, I don't know what they're doing. They have like a million dogs in their apartment and decided that it was just okay to leave them all inside all day long. And they were barking and yapping and whining. And I just couldn't focus. So now it's getting to the point. I think this is a sign for me that I just need to just cut it here and call this topic good and maybe revisit it again in the future. So I hope you all have a wonderful day, evening, whenever it is that you listen or watch this particular episode. Um, and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much to my patrons over on Patreon. I so appreciate your support. If you'd like to help support the channel and all of the work that I do here at Round the Cauldron, you can join me over at Patreon at patreon.com slash roundthecauldron for as little as a dollar a month and get patron-exclusive person content.